Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Waalaikumsalam. Good morning. Semua dah berikut. Waalaikumsalam, Madam. Dah makan? Tadi ada masa sejam. Hopefully semua dah makan lah. Dah. Alhamdulillah. Ha, kot nak share apa? Menu ke gambar makanan ke? Boleh eh? Sementara tunggu. Any more of your friends coming in? Kita ada 24 orang, baru 16 orang. Ada yang apa? Yang ada group ke? Tanya-tanya khabar kawan. Say hi to them. <laughs> yang tak bangun lagi ke? Okay so uh, I start laju sikit lah since kita start lambat pun kan. Okay sekejap ni. Eh. Okay nampak eh. So uh, this is actually the next chapter lah. I try to go based on <coughs> the schedule that is set uh, by the RP. So by, by this week we should have uh, covered uh, multiplexing. So if not uh, uh, if not being able to finish this at least I hope to cover this a little right. Okay so uh, multiplexing uh, is basically uh, how we want to uh, allow simultaneously a uh, transmission of multiple signals. Maksudnya basically, kamu dah tengok uh, chapter 2 is how you send data using either analog and digital signal. Sekarang kita ada transmission medium. Okay, so that's why transmission medium ada dalam uh, content chapter 2 juga kan. So transmission medium tu kita tak boleh hantar signal daripada one sender uh, pada satu masa, uh, of course, logically kita nak hantar banyak-banyak signal daripada multiple sender in one time. Okay, kita nak receive juga data daripada uh, multiple uh, sender at one time. Okay, so ini logik eh, sebab kita nak uh, apa laju, data laju, kita selalunya manusia pun kita multitask kan. So kita buat uh, dengar-dengar Puan Adora cakap, uh, boleh makan breakfast kan, uh, makan keropok, minum air, pakai tudung, try make up kalau girls kan. Alright, so sama juga dalam uh, communication, we want to send multiple signals across a data link. Data link kat sini refer kepada kita punya transmission medium lah, be it wired ataupun wireless. Okay, so ada beberapa teknik untuk gunakan multiplexing ni. Okay, so uh, dia terbahagi mengikut what kind of teknik yang kita guna untuk generate the signal. Okay, so ada macam ni frequency, you already know frequency is for analog signal. Okay, so kena tahulah kalau tak tahu sekarang. So frequency maksudnya oh this multiplexing is being used when we generate analog signal. Okay, Ada juga time division. In this case, this is a digital multiplexing technique. Okay. And um, ada contoh satu application yang menggunakan one of these multiplexing techniques. Okay, so this is an example comparison between having no multiplexing. Okay. Kalau zaman dulu boleh lah kan, company kecil hanya ada dua komputer, right? So sekarang everybody has at least two or three gadgets and everything, every every gadget wants to send and receive data. So with multiplexing, we gather the data from multiple channels of the sender and we gabungkan, multiplex and send within one data link, one transmission medium at the receiver, katalah ni dalam satu local area network yang sama, we need to have a demultiplexer untuk kita asingkan semula signal-signal individual ni. Dia mesti tahu cara nak hantar kepada the correct receiver. <coughs> okay. Alright. So here dia bagi nama variable n. So it could be multiple values lah. Okay. Depending on what kind of multiplexing technique yang digunakan. Okay, so let's look at the first technique. So uh, I put here 
It's an analog multiplexing technique okay, yang dinamakan frequency division multiplexing. Okay, so it can be applied when the bandwidth of a link is greater than the combined bandwidth of the signal to be transmitted. Okay, so what is the meaning of bandwidth here? Anybody remember? Semalam baru kita tengok term bandwidth kan? Okay, so anybody remember kalau analog tu apa maksud bandwidth? Difference between highest and lowest frequency? Mm, yeah, thank you Salmi. So, it's the difference between the highest and the lowest frequency. Jadi kalau dia kata uh, the bandwidth is greater than the combined bandwidth of the signal to be transmitted. So, dia mesti should be able to pass a range of frequency yang dari, datang daripada user. Kan? So, kalau dekat sini ni user, this whole bandwidth, the range of frequency must cover all the frequencies being used by all these users. Daripada the lowest, cari yang the lowest sehinggalah the highest frequency yang datang daripada user. Okay, so that is what is meant by this statement. Okay, so the signal is generated by each sending device modulating at the different frequencies. Okay, and then kita gabungkan all these different frequency into a composite signal. Uh, you've already seen juga what is meant by composite signal. Kita ambil satu carrier frequency and then kita modulatekan karakteristik dia mengikut frekuensi yang berbeza-beza. Okay, jadi we uh, get a signal, an analog signal that has the characteristics of combined, multiple signal from multiple user. Okay, so basically dalam transmission link tu, setiap satu signal tu sebenarnya kita bahagikan kepada channel and to prevent <coughs> interruption or noise, usually it's separated by unused bandwidth. So ada bandwidth, ada frequency range yang tak digunakan untuk modulate signal. So dia dipanggil guard band. Okay, so like I said, kita nak asingkan the different channels from, from each user uh, and to prevent the signal from overlapping. Okay, uh, so this is the example lah. So we have uh, tiga di sini channel, maksudnya three individual users. Okay, dan dia bagi contoh the telephone lah, telephone line tu sebab kita kalau play uh, PSTN uh, network telefon yang lama adalah analog kan. Okay, so for each signal basically dia ada dia punya own carrier frequency. Okay, and then we combine using a multiplexer to generate a signal yang ada characteristics of each of these carrier frequency. Okay, so the range of frequency yang daripada sini sehinggalah sini must be covered by this transmission link. So dia mesti ada bandwidth yang mencukupi untuk each of this frequency. Okay, so dekat receiver dia dah tahu each of its own carrier frequency. So kamu faham konsep ni macam uh, radio signal kan. So when we want to listen to our own signal, we tune in to our own carrier frequency. Okay, so daripada multiplexer, dia akan uh, demultiplex. Okay, dekat receiver dia demultiplex mengikut each of uh, the receiver's own carrier frequency. Okay, so that is the concept of frequency division multiplexing. Okay, so this is an example of how we want to uh, integrate. Kan dia, tadi dia cakap dia susun kan. Okay, so this is the statement. Okay. <coughs> okay, generated by each sending device modulate different frequency and then combine into a single composite signal and then they can be separated by unused bandwidth. Okay, so how are they arranged? So we can view this conceptually, secara conceptualnya, okay, without looking at the uh, signal generation tu sebagai ini. Okay, so although each of these 
uh, individual users bandwidth dia sama kan 0 sehingga 4 which is 4 hertz lah kan uh, sorry 4 kilohertz and when we combine okay kita kena susun lah mengikut the frequency range okay so here dia cakap ada bandwidth total bandwidth of 12 kilohertz maksudnya 12 is greater than each individual users punya bandwidth which is 4 okay kemudian kita pecahkan kepada tiga okay so the frequency range covered by the transmission link adalah 20 hingga 32 okay so bandwidth dia 12 how do we modulate so dia pecahkan kepada tiga range of frequency okay so kita allocate 20 24 untuk user satu uh, dan seterusnya okay so that's how dia arrange kan or they manage the frequency ranges Okay, supaya teratur. Okay, so these are some example questions lah. Okay, so I think you already have uh, in the slides also. Just Let's just uh, look at them. Okay, so this is an example. Kalau kita susun the frequency range and we want to prevent them from overlapping. Jadi kita ada sedikit guard band. Okay, so situation ni dia contoh, tunjuk contoh lah macam mana susunan the frequencies if the situation uh, requires us to have guard bands. Okay, so five channels each with a 100 kilohertz bandwidth are to be multiplexed together. Okay, so setiap satu user bandwidth requirement dia adalah 100 kilohertz. Okay, so macam mana kita nak kira supaya the transmission medium or the data link adalah mempunyai bandwidth yang mencukupi untuk kita hantar five signals at the same time. Okay, so ni dia kata what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is no need for a guard band, uh, sorry, if there is a need for a guard band of 10 kilohertz between the channels. Okay, so we know that we have five users Jadi in between, the space between them adalah empat dan setiap satu memerlukan 10 kilohertz. Okay, so when we view at, uh, ada graphical view macam ni, senang kita nak bayangkan kan. So kita tahulah, kita kira lima kali 100 kilohertz campur dengan empat kali 10 kilohertz. So the minimum bandwidth adalah 540 kilohertz. So situation ni kalau in real life maksudnya bila kita nak buat network planning what kind of transmission medium. So bila kamu dah tahu apa dia punya minimum transmission bandwidth of a particular transmission media kita tahulah uh, apa yang kita boleh guna. Betul tak? Okay. So this is an example yang uh, simple lah uh, in real life the signal will be a bit more complex. Okay, tetapi inilah caranya dan memang ada modulation teknik yang akan require the guard band. Okay. Okay, so let's look at another example. Okay, kamu dah tengok quam, quadrature, amplitude, modulation. Kan? Okay, so now kita nak hantar menggunakan analog signal daripada data yang digital. So dia gunakan teknik untuk tukarkan daripada digital signal kepada analog signal menggunakan 16 quam. Okay so 16 quam di sini maksudnya dia ada uh, four different uh, apa amplitude kan. Okay uh, sorry four different uh, phase kan. Okay so uh, daripada data 1 megabits per second, okay, kita boleh change dia into an analog signal having 250 kilohertz bandwidth. Okay. okay, so now kita nak hantar menggunakan a satellite channel. Okay, satellite channel masih juga gunakan radio signal which is analog and the bandwidth is 1 megahertz. Okay, so design an appropriate configuration using frequency division multiplexing. Okay, so macam mana kita nak bahagikan setiap channel untuk empat digital channel ni. <coughs> okay, so this is the example solution. The satellite is analog. We divide into four channels. So kita dah tahu ada 
empat user. Each channel will have 250 kilohertz. Okay, sebab 1 megahertz bahagi empat lah. Okay, each digital channel of 1 megabits per second is modulated such that for each 4 bits are modulated to 1 hertz. Okay, so kita hantar 4 bits okay, untuk satu signal. Okay, so that's why dia gunakan 16 quam. Okay, so boleh tengok semula uh, what is quadrature amplitude modulation. Yang kita tengok contoh adalah 2, uh, da, uh, sorry, 4 dan 8 quam. Okay, so this is the example lah. So kita combine knowledge kita mengenai uh, digital to analog modulation technique kan. Okay, kemudian kita gunakan knowledge yang baru ni untuk kita multiplex. Okay, so basically we take the total bandwidth and divide into four individual channels. Okay, modulation technique ni kena figure out lah. Okay, tapi based on the knowledge that we have, so dia bagi satu contoh gunakan 16 kuam. Okay. Okay, so salah satu application yang menggunakan frequency division multiplexing ni dinamakan analog carrier systems. So analog carrier systems, bila kita panggil carrier systems ni selalunya dia refer kepada sistem yang digunakan oleh service provider. Okay, so contohnya di sini analog carrier systems ni maksudnya Uh, line telefon di rumah tu yang analog, okay. So masa zaman dahulu ni lama dah uh, tahun 80-an macam tu kan. Okay. So it's basically macam mana service provider, contohlah macam kita kat Malaysia, TM, dia manage line telefon dekat kawasan perumahan contohnya. Okay. So basically analog carry systems is a hierarchy of frequency division multiplexing schemes. Hierarchy so dia kumpulkan. Okay, kumpulkan apa? Dia kumpulkan the voice channel. Okay, so contohnya line telefon daripada individual houses. So dia kata kita buat group yang standard. Okay, so 12 voice channels having the bandwidth of 4 kilohertz each. This will make a total of 48 kilohertz. Okay, dan kita gunakan frequency range ini. Okay, 62108. Okay, so setiap group akan di, uh, hanya allocate frequency range untuk 12 voice channels. Okay, lepas tu uh, selalu dekat, dekat line telefon ni dia ada in the, uh, apa exchange kan. Macam kita nampak box dekat kawasan perumahan macam peti sejuk sikit, peti sejuk kecil tu. So that's the service provider punya uh, exchange untuk kawasan perumahan kan. So dekat situ dia kumpul pula daripada Group ni kumpulkan menjadi satu bundle pula. So dia kumpul contohnya di sini 60 channel. Maksudnya dia kumpul 5 group tadi jadikan satu super group. Okay. Ha, macam mana nak combine pula. So ini transmission medium yang lebih besar. Contohnya kabel yang bawah tanah. Okay. Dan dia modulate dekat frequency range yang ini. Contohlah. Okay. Contoh eh saya bagi. Uh, frequency range ni depend dekat service provider lah. Okay, so katalah kabel bawah tanah daripada setiap rumah dikumpulkan menjadi satu kabel yang besar dekat bawah tanah dekat jalan sehingga ke main road. Okay, kemudian macam mana kita nak bawa pula uh, satu taman perumahan, uh, dua taman perumahan semua ke the big exchange dekat satu bandar. So kita combinekan menjadi master group. Okay, so contoh sistem ini yang set ni dia set untuk ambil 10 super group lah. Okay. So 10 super group. So itu dia punya hierarchy. Okay. So hierarchy susunan. So siapa yang nak follow this hierarchy dia kena ikut lah. Ha, dia kena set 12, combine jadi 60, combine jadi 10 super group which is 600 channels kan. Okay. So that's an example. Okay. Kalau dekat Europe selalunya Malaysia dia ikut uh, Europe lah kan uh, uh, apa dia ada dia punya own frequency range lah but we want to look at now adalah application dia but bila kita faham multiplexing is basically we combine beberapa individual signal into 
one transmission link. So now, bila dekat kawasan perumahan yang memang gunakan uh, kabel telefon tu daripada rumah ke tepi jalan, daripada tepi jalan sehingga ke jalan besar, itulah cara dia susun supaya teratur. Okay. Okay, so this is the example lah. Okay, uh, daripada uh, sini individual bawa ke super group, bawa ke master group. Okay, and finally sebenarnya ada lagi satu which is jumbo group. Okay, so other types of application of course uh, kita ada semalam kalau kamu bagi contoh radio. Okay, alright. And then we have television broadcasting. Okay, kita over the air and then now kita tu kita boleh tunekan beberapa channel kan kalau television lama lah. Okay, kalau sekarang digital kan. Uh, kalau uh, TV lama, we have one antenna dekat rumah. It's supposed to tune in for all the channels. Kalau ke, mungkin lah kalau kamu pernah TV yang lama-lama dahulu, if you want to find all these channels, kamu akan ada satu button yang dia kata dia auto tune. So dia pergi kat setiap frekuensi ada tak siaran. Okay so that's basically uh, daripada uh, satellite uh, apa satellite daripada pemancar contohnya uh, apa RTM kan uh, station lama saya bagi contoh station lama RTM dia ada TV1, TV2 kan. So dia akan multiplex the uh, apa broadcast of these two channels within one channel yang besar and people will tune in to that particular frequency. Okay, so that's how they multiplex the TV broadcast. Okay, and then like I said, cellular networks yang lama, okay, masih lagi gunakan analog. Okay, so first generation of cellular telephones, they were using analog signal and these are the channels. Okay, so those are example application of analog signal multiplexing. Okay. Another example of a wave, uh, sorry, of an analog signal multiplexing adalah wavelength division. Okay, wavelength ni particularly untuk uh, bila kita hantar laser beams. Okay, kat mana kita guna? Kita guna dekat optical fiber. Okay, so sebab dia tak guna electromagnetic signal, dia gunakan light signal. Okay, so basically dia akan uh, measure the peak of the analog signal for different frequency. Okay, so it's basically a form of frequency division multiplexing. Okay, alright, so zaman dulu okay, kabel bawah tanah tu, okay, so kita nak transmit, uh, we use wavelength division multiplexing. Okay, uh, bukan kabel bawah tanah, saya betulkan balik. Kabel bawah laut. Uh, selalu kabel bawah laut, dia gunakan fiber masa dahulu. Sekarang, uh, apa dekat bawah tanah pun sudah gunakan uh, fiber. Masa dulu tak ada kita pakai uh, copper kabel untuk di jalan bawah tanah untuk bawah laut baru pakai fiber. Okay, alright. So uh, dense wavelength division multiplexing is basically a way to improve uh, wavelength division multiplexing. So konsep dia basically to improve, bila saya cakap to improve, to uh, have more channel lah. Okay but konsep dia sama kita nak combine multiple different frequency into one link. Okay. Alright. Let's move on to the digital signal multiplexing. Okay. So teknik yang Uh, digunakan adalah TDM, Time Division Multiplexing. Okay, so instead of kita tengok the different frequency, sekarang since it's digital, kita bagi, uh, kita panggil time slot. Okay. So this is the data flow. What we do when we want to send the data adalah kita pecahkan giliran. So ni time slot lah. Time slot 1, 2, 3, 4 maksudnya giliran untuk station 1, station 2, station 3, station 4. Okay. So kita ambil, we know that digital uh, data kita hantar 1010 kan. So kita ambil katalah time slot yang pertama ambil bit 1 daripada station 1. 
Okay, time slot yang kedua ambil bit yang pertama dari station yang kedua dan seterusnya. So kita ulanglah kalau ada 8 kat sini, kena ada 8 time slot lah. Okay, untuk completekan penghantaran semua bits daripada semua station. Okay, boleh faham ya? Eh? Okay, sebab these are ones and zeros. So, okay, so kita nak hantar uh, satu, katalah contoh hantar satu bit dalam satu time slot. Okay, so ambil satu letak sini. Ambil satu letak kat sini. Okay. Sama juga dekat D multiplexer. So you need to know lah this is the first time slot. So first time slot adalah dedicated untuk first user dan seterusnya. Okay. Okay, so kalau tadi dekat analog kita kira the bandwidth. The bandwidth must be greater than the individual bandwidth of the sender. Okay, untuk uh, digital signal since it is a time division, so the data rate of the link. Okay, so berapa banyak kita nak hantar pada satu masa. Data rate kan macam bit rate. Okay, berapa bits that we can send at one particular period of time. Okay, so period of time dia one seconds. Okay, so the data rate of the link is n times faster and the unit duration is n times shorter. Okay, so the duration will be berkadar songsang lah dengan the data rate. Okay, so this is an example. So yang ni kita tunjuk bahawa uh, setiap station ada data nak hantar. Okay, so contohnya dekat sini station A ada data, station B tak ada data, station C ada data. Okay, so this will be the look of the frame. Okay, nampak eh? So, frame ni maksudnya the slot lah. Slot untuk kali pertama hantar. So, kita allocate kan. Since ada tiga user, we allocate three time slots. Okay. So, kali pertama, okay, untuk user one ada data, kita ambil satu bit contohnya. Uh, untuk time slot kedua, user B, dia tak ada data nak hantar. Okay, so biarkan kosong. User C ada data nak hantar, ambil. Kat time slot kedua, A ada data, B ada data, C tak ada. Kat time slot ketiga, A ada, B ada, C pun ada. Okay, so simple. I think it's clear for you. So each frame is three time slots. Okay, so the time slot is divided based on the user. And each time slot duration is T seconds. Setiap satu adalah T. Jadi kalau ada tiga, maksudnya kita ada tiga T lah. Okay, so an example uh, dari segi uh, rates eh. Kita dah tengok bit rate. So let's look at an example. For 1 kilobits per second connections are multiplexed together. So ada empat station. Setiap satu data rate dia ataupun bit rate dia adalah 1 kilobits per second. Okay, so a unit is one bit. Maksudnya kita hantar satu bit setiap kali hantar. Okay. So what can we conclude? Okay, so macam mana kita nak uh, conclude pasal sistem multiplexing macam ni? Okay, sebab dia kata a unit is one bit. So kita boleh cari nilai-nilai ini. The duration of one bit before multiplexing, the transmission rate of the link, the duration of a time slot and the duration of a frame. Okay, so boleh bayangkan kan? So nilai daripada sini lah kena tengok kat sini dahulu and then kena tengok rupa frame tu satu time slot nilai dia berapa kalau semua dalam satu frame tiga time slot ni nilai dia berapa macam tu. Okay. So cuma soalan ni dia tunjuk ada empat. Okay. So the duration of one bit is one over one kilobits per second. Okay sebab dia ambil satu Totalnya adalah satu kilo kan. Dia ada seribu bits untuk dihantar dalam masa satu saat. Tapi setiap kali kita ambil, kita ambil satu bits sahaja. Jadi berapa duration dia? Bahagilah. So one over one kilobits per second which will be one millisecond. Okay. So time slot di sini mesti lebih kecil. See the duration is n times shorter. So dia mesti kecil lah. Kecil dia berapa kali ganda? Kecil dia seribu kali ganda lebih kecil. Kan? Okay. 
Okay, seribu di sini sebab kita ada seribu bit lah. Okay, what is the rate of the link? The rate of the link must be n times faster. So, kita ada satu kilobits per second dan ada empat channel. So, it could be four kilobits per second. Okay, kalilah. So, dia n times faster kan? Ni, the rate of the link is n times faster. So, n stations. So, we have uh, four times uh, one kilobits per second. So, the rate of the link is four kilobits per second. So, the duration of each time slot is one over four milliseconds. Okay, so kita kena divide kan? Sebab ada satu milisecond kena divide kepada empat. Okay, and the duration of a frame is one millisecond. Okay, so pecahan ini kali semula empat menjadi satu milliseconds. Okay, boleh eh? So, nampak eh? Macam ni jugalah macam saya tunjuk tadi. Okay, pecahkan satu bila jadi satu frame kalilah berapa time slot yang ada. Okay, I think there's another example. Okay, so kita tengok dulu interleaving. Okay, so interleaving is this mechanism lah macam mana dia ambil basically dia macam uh, round robin process kan. So dia akan ambil satu sini, satu sini, satu sini, hantar. Macam mana dia demultiplex sama juga interleaving ni ambil pass kat user, ambil pass kat user, ambil pass kat user. Okay. So, di sini kepentingan dia is the rotation. Betul tak? Kita nak make sure uh, betul tak uh, the interleaving. Maksudnya kalau ada mekanisme macam ni eh. Ni nampak uh, sebenarnya bayangan je lah kan. Tapi, tetapi dalam sekretari dia lain kan. Tapi cara dia ambil ni. Macam mana dia nak letak dekat each time slot. Jadi bila yang ni berpusing untuk letak timing dia mesti sama dengan the receiver. Sebab kita tak nak salah letak. Takut dia ambil A1 ni bagi dekat B3. Okay. So it needs to be synchronized. Alright. So dalam digital bila dia cakap ni switches ni dalam digital selalunya contoh device macam switch kan. Okay. So konsep dia bila dia hantar. Okay. Uh, bila dia hantar dia punya rate of processing tu mesti sama dengan rate of terima. Okay, so konsep bila benda ni untuk membawa uh, kepentingan macam mana dia nak allocatekan kepada time slot yang betul dan juga allocatekan kepada receiver yang betul. Okay, so another example. Four channels are multiplex using TDM if each channel sends 100 bytes per second. Okay, so nampak unit dia. Sebab tu dia panggil data rate. Okay, sebab dia bukan sahaja dalam bentuk bits. Okay, so in this example dia gunakan bytes per second. And then we multiplex one byte per channel. Satu byte berapa bit? Hmm, just to refresh your brain. Satu byte berapa bit? Lapan. Lapan. Okay, Alhamdulillah ingat. Alright, so bila kita faham ni maksudnya senanglah kan bila nak kira. Okay, multiplex one byte. Jadi dia bukan ambil satu bit for satu time slot. Dia ambil lapan bit for each time slot. Okay, so show the frame travelling on the link, the size of the frame, the duration of a frame, the frame rate and the bit rate. Okay, so konsep dia lebih kurang sama kan. Okay, so for you guys to know, maksudnya kamu kena faham lah. Ni, mesti akan tanya duration of one bit ataupun duration of one time slot, the data rate of the link, the duration of the time slot and the duration of the frame. Sama juga contoh ni. Laju pula. Okay. Size of the frame, duration of the frame, the frame rate and the bit rate. Okay. So, uh, di sini 100 bytes. Ada empat user so dia pecahkan kepada empat time slot. Okay so sebab dia interleave satu kali satu time slot adalah satu byte or lapan bit. Jadi ada empat time slot lapan kali empat jadi tiga puluh dua bit. Okay so satu frame 
sekali yang combine semua 4 time slot mesti ada 32 bit. Okay dan dia kata dia hantar 100 bytes per second. Okay so maksudnya kena ada 100 frames lah untuk hantar semua 100 bytes kan. So dia kena ada since ni letak 8 so nak hantar 100 bytes per second kena ada 100 frame. Okay and uh, for each frame kita ada 32 bits. 32 kali 100 makes it 3200 bits per second. Okay so the frame duration is 1 second divided by 100 frames. Okay so this is the frame duration. Okay boleh faham eh? Okay another example. Okay, so a multiplexer combines four 100 kilobits per second channel using a time slot of two bits. Okay, so kita dah tengok satu bit, lapan bit, now it's two bits. Okay, show the output with four arbitrary inputs. Ni contoh soalan eh, kalau uh, nanti tiba-tiba ada soalan katakan, bila dia kata four arbitrary, letaklah whatever number here yang melambangkan digital. Okay. So what is the frame rate, what is the frame duration, what is the bit rate, what is the bit duration. Okay, sama juga konsep dia. Since dia hantar 100 kilobits per second dan setiap satu time slot ada dua. Dua bit. Okay, so 100 kilobits tu adalah 100,000 kan. Jadi kalau dia hantar dua, okay, kita bahagilah 100 bahagi dua, you will get 50,000. So you need 50,000 frames in order for you to finish sending 100,000 bits for one second. So the frame duration will be one second divided by the 50,000 frames. Okay, so you get that amount 20 milliseconds. So what about the frame? The frame contains 2 kali 4 kan? So ada 8 bit kali berapa frame? Kali 50,000 frame. Okay. So you will get 400,000 bits per second. Okay. Boleh eh? Okay. So uh, satu kelemahan uh, synchronous time division multiplexing ni adalah uh, dia hanya possible when the data rate of the medium exceeds the data rate of the digital signal to be transmitted. Yang ni kita faham kan sebab kita kata the data the rate the data rate of the link must be n times greater. Okay so bandwidth dia kat sini adalah the possible bit rate yang boleh pass kan. So remember the difference of bandwidth in analog signal and digital signal. So untuk bandwidth dalam digital signal kita mesti melepasi all the bit rates. Okay, so jadi capacity uh, apa the transmission link must be enough to send all the uh, data rates of the individual signal. Okay, and the multiple digital signals are interleaved uh, from each signal during the transmission. Okay, the time slots are pre-assigned to sources and they are fixed. Okay, fixed di sini. Maksudnya, uh, nak tunjuk contoh tadi. Uh, ni. Okay, time slot adalah fixed. Walaupun uh, sender tu tak ada data nak hantar. So, nampak ni kosong, ni kosong. Okay, so ni characteristic of this time division multiplexing dan kita panggil dia synchronous time division multiplexing. Synchronous sebab dia sync kepada setiap individual user. Walaupun user tu tak ada data nak hantar pada masa itu. Kan? Kalau kita hantar teks, okay, uh, teks selalunya uh, dia tak konsisten. Kalau video dia mesti okay, always moving kan? Kalau teks, uh, contohlah jenis data yang kita hantar tu adalah teks. Sometimes dia banyak, sometimes dia senyap. Tak ada. Kan? <laughs> okay? So contoh kalau kita hantar WhatsApp kan, uh, ada times channel tu senyap je. Ada times uh, beria, beria, beria hantar kan, semua orang nak menjawab. Okay so those kinds of data ada yang dia tak hantar pada masa time slot itu. Okay kelemahan dia di sini 
adalah kita tak gunakan the full capacity of uh, the transmission link lah. Okay, so time slots are allocated even if there is no data and the time slots do not have to be evenly distributed amongst the sources. Jadi bila macam tu, walaupun kita kata bandwidth dia perlu lebih besar tetapi sebenarnya kita tak gunakan pun. Okay, walaupun sebab kita fix, uh, mesti banyak ni. Mesti n times faster than the number of users. Walaupun sebenarnya at peak time, ada user yang tak hantar data. Okay, faham eh konsep tu? Um, okay. Kemudian ada lagi contoh uh, apa uh, sedikit kelemahan dia. Okay, in terms of synchronization. Okay, so like I said, uh, okay, saya suka lah scroll-scroll kan. Uh, uh, yang ini, konsep ni kan. You need to have proper timing so that you hantar kepada time slot yang betul dan kemudian daripada time slot hantar kepada user yang betul. Okay, so if there is lack of synchronization, you might uh, come into error. Okay, so ini tak apa. Uh, maksudnya dia overcome dengan tambahkan something called framing. Framing ni kita tambah uh, one control bit yang seolah-olah macam a synchronization bit. Okay, tetapi di sini dia cakap lah, okay, the additional bit dia tak bawa data walaupun dia 1010. Okay, but it's more for synchronizing and it just looks like another channel. Okay, alright. So, bila receiver terima, dia akan compare. Contohlah, contoh pattern yang dipersetujui adalah bit pertama adalah synchronizing bit. So, kita mesti terima pattern macam ni. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Kalau salah maksudnya it's unsynchronized kan. So, the receiver akan tengok bit pertama. Okay, adakah dia sama dengan pattern yang dipersetujui? Okay, so if pattern does not match, successive bit position are searched until persist over multiple frames. Dia mesti make sure dia akan cari for the next bits. Okay, untuk jumpa pattern ini. Okay, when there is a pattern established, the receiver will continue monitoring the frame. Okay, so kalau betul, okay lah dia continue monitoring. Okay. So, if the pattern breaks, again, tiba-tiba lain, lari, tiba-tiba satu-satu, the receiver must again enter a framing search mode. Search mode dia kena cari juga sampai jumpa that pattern. Barulah dia tahu itu adalah frame yang betul. Okay. So, this example lah macam mana synchronize. Uh, letak pattern 101. So, at the beginning of the frame, you add a one bit. Okay. So, satu, kosong, satu. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, another example. Is this the same? Okay, lain eh. We have saw four sources each creating 250 characters per second. If the interleaf unit is a character and one synchronizing bit uh, is added. Okay. So, dia bagi tambah contoh ada pula synchronizing bit. Okay, so how many bits is one character? Anybody? Mungkin pernah belajar sebelum ni, tak pernah dengar. Kalau kita nak type satu character, kalau saya tekan keyboard A, satu. Berapa bit digunakan untuk represent A tu? Satu bit juga bukan eh? Bukan. It's lapan bit. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh. So, each character ada lapan bit. So, sekarang dia kata each creating 250 characters. So, 250 character kali satu character lapan bit which makes, which makes it. Uh, data rate dia adalah 2000 bits per second ataupun 2 kilobits per second. Okay, so ni untuk soalan pertama sebenarnya dah cover. Okay, so the data rate of each source adalah uh, kira lah. Okay, so that makes it each individual source generates uh, data at 2 kilobits per second. 
Okay. So the duration of a character is 1 over 250. Okay. So dia hantar 250 character kan. So dia bahagi teruslah satu slot hantar 1 over 250 seconds. Okay. So that makes it 4 millisecond. Okay. So the link needs to send 250 frames per second. Okay. Because dia hantar one character. Dia hantar, dia tarik dia 250 dan setiap kali hantar, hantar satu character. Jadi kena kita perlukan 250 frames. Okay. What is the duration of each frame? So again lah, you get back the same number. Okay. And uh, dia kata, what is the number of bits in each frame? Okay, so now we add one synchronizing bit. So we already know setiap satu karakter 8 bit, ada 4 user, maksudnya 32 bit, tetapi dia nak tambah satu synchronizing bit. Okay, so each frame has 33 bits. So what is the data rate of the link? Kalilah. Semula, okay, sebab we know that we need 250 frames to send all the characters. So each frame is 33 times 250, you get 8250, 8.2 kilobits per second. Okay, so this is just the application of your previous knowledge. Cuma tambah characteristic yang memerlukan synchronizing bit. Okay, so that is synchronous time division multiplexing. Okay, kenapalah dia lari ni? Okay. Alright, so another example, uh, I leave it to you eh. Okay, untuk tengok. Alright, and then uh, sometimes, okay, selama ni kita tengok contoh semua ni, all the channels have the same rates. Semua 1 kilobits per second, semua 250 characters. Tapi in real life, um, kemungkinan tak semua sources mempunyai rate yang sama. Okay. So what do we do? What is the solution? Okay. So since TDM, usually we synchronize data from various sources and each source has separate clock. So macam saya cakap, each source kemungkinan the data rate is not the same. Okay. So macam mana kita nak make sure all these time slots are uh, correctly synchronized. Okay. So, kita gunakan pulse stuffing. Okay. So, pulse stuffing is basically we add extra dummy bits. Okay. Dummy bits ni ataupun nama lain dia pulses. Okay. Into each incoming signal until it matches the local clock. Local clock di sini uh, mungkin dalam slide tu tak berapa clear. So, saya, saya cari gambar yang uh, lebih clear lah. So ni daripada buku Furuzan. Okay. So this is an example. Okay. So the data rate for these two sources is 50 kilobits per second. No problem. They are the same. However, this user hantar hanya 46 kilobits per second. So dia tak sama kan bila kita nak allocate uh, apa time slot. What we do is we add extra dummy bits that should make it 50 kilobits per second. Okay. Nampak macam tu barulah kita boleh arrange for demultiplexing. Okay. Boleh. Okay. So then we have an example application macam tadi kita ada analog carrier systems for frequency division multiplexing. So digital carrier systems is basically the digital version of it. Okay, so bila kita gunakan long distance carrier system, dia bagi contoh ni company yang dah lama-lama, key industry player AT&T ni company lama eh, telecoms company. So sama juga konsep dia macam mana uh, dia ada hierarchy of grouping. Sekejap eh, ada tak diagram dia. Ha, macam ni lah. So, konsep dia lebih kurang sama. So, you have DS0 which is the first level. Kita groupkan 24 channels. Okay. Dan di, bila maksimum group tu daripada 24 jadilah dia 64 kilobits per second. Dan seterusnya sampailah DS4. Okay. Selalunya nama lain kalau nak tengok ni contoh adalah the T. T 
T1, T2, T3 lines. Okay, zaman-zaman dululah. Okay, you can search. Okay, but this is an example application menggunakan multiplexing ni. Okay, so ni another example lah. So, nampak dia tunjuk North American and also international. International selalunya European lah dan sebagainya. Okay, kan North American ni selalu standard dia berbeza sikit. North America dengan Japan selalu guna standard sama. Uh, yang lain-lain di dunia akan gunakan this one. Okay, so this one saya akan sambung for uh, next lecture. Okay, just let me uh, give me a chance to take an attendance. Okay, Abbas. Ada, Madam. Ahmad Kamal. Ada, Madam. Alia. Saya, Madam. Asyati. Asyati ada tak? Asyati tak ada. Nifan Amar. Saya Madam. Muhammad Haziq. Tak ada eh. Aiman. Saya Madam. Amin. Amin Imam ada, Madam. Madam, Aziati terkeluar, Madam. Tadi dia ada. Ada. Okay, thank you. Amar Kusairi. Tak ada eh. Firdaus. Ada. Hafizuddin. Tak ada eh. Hisham. Ya, yeah, saya. Natasha. Saya Madam Muhammad Haris Nick Muhammad Haris Tak ada Nur Izati Saya Madam Nur Atira Saya Madam Nur Elia Diana Saya Madam Nur Manisa Saya Madam Nur Iza Saya Madam Raihan Raihan ada tak? Tak ada. Semalam pun tak ada kan? Salmi Nadira. Saya Madam. Okay. Syai Datu Syahir, Syahirin. Tak ada. Syazwani Nadira. Ada masih masuk lagi ke? Syazwani. Okay. Nik Muhammad baru join eh. Dia terkeluar tadi. Okay. Siti Nur Syamimi. Okay. No teknik. Nur Syamimi. Saya Madam. Okay. Alright. Uh, saya ulang semula. Maybe you could say hi atau betulkan saya. Muhammad Haziq tak ada. Uh, Amar. Kushairi. Muhammad Hafizuddin. Dan juga Raihan. Okay. Betul eh. Masih tak ada eh. Uh, Raihan dah dua kali. If you know her, can you just send my regards to her? Tanya khabar. Okay. Uh, make sure she's okay ke ataupun ada masalah ke. Okay boleh? Tak kenal? Kenal ke tak kenal? Kenapa semua senyap eh? Kenal. 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 Okay. <laughs> Long message dia eh. Kalau ada okay. apa MC ke apa ke just tell me lah. Saya takut saya tak keep track kamu nanti. Okay dah lah kita tak tengok muka kan. All right. Anyway, thanks everyone. Uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Thank you. Okay, madam. Okay, okay madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.